Ton, hört man Ton? Kann man mich hören? Ja, endlich, okay. The Artist is Online uh, is the title of the project Annika Meyer and I uh, conceived. And we want to talk about this tonight here and present the uh, talk series we are planning and uh, which has been announced. And Annika will give us uh, an introduction about this. Who she invited, or who we invited. We presented the first project of the series yesterday. Hi, Annika. Hi, Johan. How are you? It's all right. Cool. It's a bit much to read, but... Um, um, so, I just said... The, the, but maybe you can explain. So, there, the, 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 on the top is the, the exhibition titled The Artist is Online. <laughs> Oops. No, sorry. <laughs> I hold it. That was me like... <laughs> And then, and then the, this surprisingly works is the first project within the frame of yeah. the artist's own life. Exactly. Do you want me? Please, okay. yeah. So yeah, I mean, we started working on a group show like one year ago, I think. You called me and asked me to meet you and start planning on a, on a group show. And the idea was to pre present the younger generation of artists that are digital natives and work with social media and about how technology uh, affects the production and reception of art, I guess. And then, yeah, we worked on it, for like, I think like daily for a year now. And then we wanted to open the exhibition or plan to open on April 9th and like everyone, we couldn't. Um, so yeah, um, and then we decided to pre-launch um, the VR piece, Manuel Rosner, Berlin-based um, VR artist, started working on November, I guess, and he had the idea to release the VR piece as a smartphone, smartphone game long before the Corona lockdown. That's why we were so fast with releasing it. We were fast. Yeah. What I mean, do you mean? Yeah, we couldn't have done this in three weeks, could we? No, but I mean, why? Um, so because because you you concerned that it doesn't that it's not taken serious in the way it should be taken serious because of the context. You, because I think you got the feedback that people said, "Oh, funny, you you hit out a quick uh, game here." Yeah, I think we. I mean, people who are in the topic totally understand that this wasn't something that we could have done in like the last three or four weeks. Uh, but we also had re reactions that people were like, okay, sweet idea, bye-bye, uh, and congrats. And I think as soon as we started, like Manuel and I, we did some interviews on the on the show. And as soon as we started explaining, uh, as soon as we said, well, we're working on this since like a year and intens intensely since like six months, the perception totally changes. Because I think so many things happen happen right now online with museums and galleries. And it's easy to think, well, okay, they just did a funny thing for the gallery. I, I don't think it, it, it plays a significant role how long something takes actually in, in, in measuring the results of it, if it's good or, or, or not. Um, so, but the, everybody is invited to download this game. Oh, no, actually, it's not a game. I mean, like, the, the, the tricky thing about... about uh, which I understand, which is kind of tough to communicate, is the sculptures, although, although maybe it totally uh, is shifted because Manuel said that he's coming from gaming, right? If I remember right, that he's this is that he's somehow, somewhat of a background. Yes. And, and it's maybe more informed by gaming than it is by, I don't know, formalist sculpture or... Um, institutional critique or um, minimalism or something like this. Um, and that's very interesting, was very interesting for me in the process of this of the curation of this exhibition. For me, it's very difficult I, because I have like standards or a certain understanding of how I perceive art and, and approach 
contemporary practice, but in the digital realm, it's kind of tricky because the, um, uh, yeah, I, I think we, whatever we, we look at, we somehow look, through, look at it through a filter of what we know and what we appreciate and don't appreciate. And then, uh, and it, this is a, for me, rather new field. Um, so we're going to deepen that in these conversations we are planning. Maybe you can walk us through the, the, the schedule. And do you have the program in front, front of you on your iPad? No. <laughs> okay, good. But I can so, look. But I, can no, the... I think I know it and I know the whole program. So the idea was um, to, have a, to have a talk series on the topic. I mean, like Johan said, you can download, download the game A in the App Store and B in the Google Play, uh, Play Store. You just have to um, search for König Gallery. German, König Gallery, type it in and then download. Uh, so the idea was to speak with experts in the fields of net art, digital art, post-internet art. And then, like we said, we are working on a bigger exhibition, like a group show. Right now it's 30 artists. Can you, you very quickly, can you very quickly explain the differences between net art, post-internet art, and what was the third one? And digital art. Digital art. I think we're going to get um, experts talk about this, but net art was like uh, started when computers were new and it was m mostly browser based art. And then when post internet art came, that was the big point of critique that artists started going back to the gallery space or the museum space and might, might work for the gallery space again. And then digital art is work that works with the digital. And so net art is like, referencing the, the fact that it's a network yeah exactly. only taking place in the within the net so to speak yes digital is pure digital yes and the critique on post internet was because like post internet because it's like leaving the internet going back to the institutional gallery commercial space exactly and the interesting thing is you're going to have a i think you're going to talk to marissa olsen uh, she's an artist and writer and she coined the term post-internet art. And I guess that's going to be very expensive, uh, not expensive, interesting to talk. <laughs> that was already oh, funny. It's already expensive enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to be very interesting to talk to Marissa about how the term changed in like probably the last, I don't know, five years, especially through social media. Um, and we have someone from Rhizome who's going to tell us about net art. And we have an expert tomorrow evening uh, who knows a lot about digital art exhibitions and art and gaming. And then we start talking to some of the artists who are in our show, like Bans and Bowinkle, Rachel Rossin, who is Pascal Sender, um, and Kaken. We're going to have a movie night with the artist collective Kaken uh, next Sunday evening at 10. Um, and so the topic here is mostly like painting in the digital digital age digital age because that's also what um what manuel thinks about in his um game or exhibition because the, there are sculptures and paintings but when manuel produces it it's, it's basically painting on the computer so when he paints these things turn into culture and volume sculptures and volume and the artist is online of course uh, let us remember the artist is present by Marina Abramovic, which was actually more or less to the date is 10 years ago. Is it a coincidence? I don't know. We, we had a title. Can we, can we mention the old title? No, there's not, I, I don't understand this, this also this idea of communication strategy to say that, that how things are meant to be and, and how long they took and so on. I don't understand why, why, unless the process is part of the, um, part of it. I totally understand, but I think in this situation, uh, it changes the perception, at least of Manuel's piece or in general. Uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, we had a title and then... Um, yeah, but now the title is The Artist is Online. And exactly. You, and you, 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 you had the idea for the title The Artist is Online, and of course, automatically you, you feel reminded of is this, 
I mean, it's, it, it is kind of like a jokey thing, no? It's artists online. Or it's like reflecting on the fact that artists needs to be online. What, what, how to interpret this? I think uh, what, what you said when we started thinking about how to keep working on this, uh, you said, well, it's, it's time to rethink um, the structures of making an exhibition. What is an exhibition? How can an exhibition be presented? Uh, and so on. And that's what led me to the idea of thinking also differently about how an artist works. That's, that lets me to the, to the title, the, the artist is present by Marina Abramovic. And not all of the, not, not all artists who work with social media as a medium uh, do performances in that medium, but, but some artists um, are offline with their work, but still are communicating online. So the artists are online, but that doesn't mean that all their art is online. But I, maybe it's, it's, it also uh, functions in this sense that Marina Abramovic, with her being present, I read this post here by Klaus Wiesenbach, who, 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 who was referring to this that it's 10 years ago, and that he, he traveled to South Africa to visit Cambridge, and that she said to him then, you can't, you can't go and let me be here alone and do this. And the artist is present. What is different with her in that fact, her being in her own show present all day, all all way long is of course a, a different involvement by the artist and maybe what kind of subsequently makes sense with the artist is online is that in our new reality we eventually expect the artist to be more involved more self-promoting more um, um, available and more, uh, you know, it's like, it's interesting because also what it does to Paris and its traditional role of, of representation and spokespeople and like, you know, I built what, in the end, we are a platform for galleries. Even it's very small and it's very subjective to my personal approach. It's very, uh, it's a platform for their practice and language and uh, artistic articulation. And interesting is with, with the social media and the artists being, having the chance to be online, they can self-promote, self-communicate, they, they, they can draw a picture of their own, uh, they want to, how they want to be seen. Um, and what personally drove me, my, my interest, what drove my interest most in that project was pretty much the question of what defining visual art today and aren't the borders between I don't know coding and makeup artists and music and uh, I don't know what cooking uh, becoming all one and and where the where the distinguished differences in in elites are being built and who could be like in good example um, Talking about this, Kaiken, maybe no? Huh? Kai, what's the name again? Kaiken. Kaiken, yeah. Yeah. Well, can you talk about them a little bit, maybe? Um, they are they are an artist collective, three women, uh, working in various media, and we're going to show their movie Feel My Metaverse on Sunday evening. And what's interesting is that they that it's like a movie you can you can interact with via an AR filter, for example. I mean, that's like sort of the next game of involvement, but let me think about who else could be a good example. Oh, how, so how, maybe you how, do we, how do we going to show the video? <laughs> it's going to be a surprise. Okay. Good. But it's going to be live or it's going to be linked or? We can't tell yet. It's a okay, surprise. Good. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's a big, big surprise. Okay, good. Um, um, who else could be a good example? Maybe, oh, maybe someone like um, Andy Pichy. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's based in Paris, Italian Swiss artist. And I mean, what's also interesting about the title of the exhibition, The Artist is Online, like you mentioned before, um, so many things have changed. I mean, artists are their own PR person. They do their marketing. Um, they have to communicate what they are working on. They have to communicate exhibitions and so on. And when they work with social media, they also have to keep in mind technolo technological, uh, te new technologies like uh, when, when Instagram releases 
or when, when you have the possibility to suddenly uh, release AR filters, then what does an artist do that works uh, with social media? And someone like Andy Fitchy, uh, he, he always um, tries to be sort of ahead of the time. And so when, when the AR filters were new and he started working with AR filters, and um, yeah, if you want, check out Andy Pichy's uh, solo show. He did a solo exhibition in an AR filter. So just can go to his profile. Huh? Can you type it in? Can I, can I send a comment? Yeah, as a comment, yeah. I can, I can also, I can also I do, do a thing. So you so, have to, to find the app, the This Surprisingly Works app. I mean, no, in that's, fact, that's Andy PG. Yeah, he, I know, I know. I just, I just wanted to, to leave some show notes, you know, like König Gallery. Great. Not so easy to do both at the same time. I know. And interesting, uh, uh, so you, you write Andy PG? Yeah, I wrote it. Okay, the app is König Gallery. And um, so, Andy, it's at Andy PG, yeah? Yeah, it's in and, there. And he, he developed a face filter. Yes, he developed a face filter for our exhibition. Exactly, we're going to release this soon. Um, but for now, um, he's, doing, um, a, he's doing a diary since he, he got back to Switzerland and is in self-isolation. So he releases a new piece of art on his Instagram every day. And after like 40 days, he put the best of those pieces um, into an AR filter. So you can visit an exhibition, a solo show by Andy with I think six pieces or so uh, via an AR filter and walk around in sort of like a white cube in the digital space. So we're gonna have we have we have a, we have the virtual gallery space which is changing. You know it's, that's why the app is also called König Galerie because it's the König digital space. Like we have London, Tokyo, Berlin. Now we have digital, and it's changing mm -hmm. probably in a monthly six-week base. The old exhibitions will be archived. Then we gotta have a face filter, right? Mm -hmm. And which okay. other? We're going to have a couple of face filters. I think if everything works, works out, Instagram doesn't release filters as fast as usually since the lockdown. So, but the first face filter should be released next week. So I think we're going to have three face filters on König Gallery by various artists. <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then you can do all your live streams with a, with a face filter on, you know, like each day a different one because you have so many face filters. Uh, what else are we going to have? Um, like this one? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's even. You have can you have one already on your phone? You can preview uh, with us. Or, no, no, I don't. Working well to this. this oh, kind of that's that's stuff? very cute. Yeah. Is <laughs> it? You stuff? should wear this every day. Yeah, I I should get more into this. You know, I'm kind of like a late bloomer in the digital. In this one's quite good. In the digital field. Oh, no. I'm, I guess. Oh, wow. No. But do you have one? Can you show us one? Or should we leave it to the artist to present? Yeah, I, do, I don't have the filters on, the new filters on my phone. Um, but yeah, there's probably going to be one next week. There's some question I see here in the thread. It's like saying... <laughs> um, making money how are we going to make money with this yeah we're going to be really rich selling digital art like everyone <laughs> <laughs> this is going to make us so rich i can't wait no um yeah i was one i, I mean i i work on on these things and i have a genuine interest in oh well i can can go back like sort of 10 oh johan this is <laughs> <laughs> Oh my Don't god. Stop. I'm just getting started. <laughs> okay, sorry. So I tried to concentrate. No, but so, seriously, how I mean, are we going to explore in our work in progress? Are we going to explore on the possibilities of marketing this? I think there's something planned with the the artist who's sharing kind of bitcoins of his career. You can become an early investor, no? Yeah, exactly. But I, I think the goal is to actually sell art 
um, and most of the artists have collectors, so this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but but I don't think that your interest in making this exhibition was getting super rich, right? It's I mean, then you would have done so something. dominant in my interest in all things. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we, we can we can tell people that we that actually you yourself are very involved in this whole thing. Uh, I mean, course, I think. Yeah. We're, I mean, uh, you, are, you are the co-curator or both of us are the curators and both of us are work on this like every day. And then, yeah, we're on the phone. I, like I, I just honestly still don't know, don't know uh, what it exactly is, but I think that's an interesting point, you know, because I, I, I really think it's way more interesting than losing the traditional form of a gallery because I think the most problematic um, tendencies I could see in, in practices of Amalia Uman, for example, mm. is the frame, it works, how it works within the framing of Instagram, you know, but then once it leaves Instagram and you just print the same image on, on, a, on an aluminum tile and put it up the wall, it's not that interesting anymore, you know, so, so um, that's why I'm very eager to, to experiment with these possibilities they are. Although I'm not that secure in my um, position, but that's a shaping process. But I think for all of us, because it's so new, you know, it's also when you look into the development of video art, um, <clears throat> how uh, it takes maybe a generation to, to really validate. Um, but uh, can, can I say one can I say one thing? Because you mentioned okay. Amalia Ullmann. I think what Amalia Ullmanns did, the performance in 2014 that, that went on for, I think, four months, that was made for Instagram, you know, that was especially made for Instagram. So maybe like with net art and post-internet you, you, art, you can also say, well, there's social media art or Instagram art, which is made for the medium Instagram. And then you have post-social media art, which is made for the exhibition space again, like someone like Andy Kassir, the German... German uh, artist. I mean, he also has a long, long-term performance on his Instagram running. But when he makes work for the exhibition space, it's only the same topic. You know, the person, the role he's playing, the the self-made man, the rich person who only knows success. But when he does a piece for for a gallery or a museum, it's not just prints from his Instagram, but he does like a big installation. So I think that's two different things. Yeah, but and is it is it is it is it still this this good? You know, it's like I think that Amalia Uman project was was amazing, but how the the the, the it's also the the the, the need of leaving uh, its original framework to oh it's I hear myself. I, 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 you have Don't your I, No, I only hear you once. It's good. Okay, because I hear myself twice. So um, that's why I think it's so much more interesting to, to like Manuel's project gets more attention now than it would have gotten if it would have if, if it would be a physical exhibition. Because, I mean that because then you always end up with like this place and exhibitions and the sensual experience of art is is not happening on a on a small screen unless. The art is conceived to be experienced on the spot. I mean, when Manuel had the idea, and you're totally right, to turn the, his VR piece into a smartphone smartphone um, game was that I mean, um, a VR piece. How many people actually can see a VR piece? And we would have had, or we're going to have, like two um, two glasses, so people would have had to queue. And I mean, Manuel is finishing the VR piece right now, and you're going to. Um, He's going to visit you, I think, next week, and then you can try it out, and it's going to be a totally different experience because then suddenly you can walk around in VR in the gallery space. But the idea um, to turn this into a smartphone game was that, like, everyone can visit and visit the exhibition and experience the thing. But can everybody visit who who has a VR um, who has a VR glasses? Can they visit? Yeah. And everybody here who's watching, when they have their own Oculus Rift, or what it's called, can visit. Yeah. Let me put headphones on. Maybe you can say something. 
to entertain our <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you are the entertainer. That's your job. I'm the writer, you know. <laughs> Maybe then you can write something. Yeah, I, I can. I can write a poem. I, I can do. A, I can do a performance. I'm going to drink. Yeah. Okay, now I'm, <laughs> I'm like bound to this. I, I'm kind of, kind of, yes. I can't keep the distance now. It's, okay. Okay, but I but think anyway, now? we we kind of covered it all anyway. <laughs> Most of it, at least. <laughs> What's that? That's I read this Japanese <laughs> book, you know, on how to keep tidy things up. <laughs> What's the name again? Of you what? know this bestseller she wrote on how to. Oh yeah, I, I forgot, but let's not promote that. Anyway, I'm still here <laughs> myself, so it's not really changing. Are there any questions from anybody? Maybe we can answer some questions about the exhibitions, the artist is online, and the first release of this exhibition series, this surprisingly works. This rather surprisingly works. No, surprisingly, this rather works. Oh, this one. This Because <laughs> I think it's, it's too late, maybe 10 o'clock. <laughs> Why Coke, Annika? People, I think my, that was a joke for my followers because my friends and followers know that I drink one Coke like every day and it makes me super happy. So when I finish my work day, I drink one can of Coke and it makes me really happy. It really does. I drink sparkling water exclusively and I, and I acquired, we acquired an ex, uh, a sparkling water fountain so we don't need to buy bottles anymore. Okay, cool. I only can recommend this. This is quite of a high investment at the beginning, but then later you, you profit from it. I um, recommend Coke, but we're not sponsored by any. No, there's no sponsor. No, no, no sponsor. No and, sponsor. And, no and no capacity. No. So um, there's no questions here. Then I guess uh, we call <laughs> it light. Oh, no, there's one. Yeah, this is what I keep on asking as well. What are we <laughs> selling at this exhibition? I mean, we don't know. I mean, but you know, you know, If you look at all, I mean, Mike Krieger, who's the founder of this platform we are on right now, he's a, he's a client of, of, of mine. And they, I don't think they thought of what this would be when they started. So I think first you need to find out what it is, get familiar with it. And unfortunately, we are in the position to, to experiment here and, and try new things out and then be just on the forefront of it. And if there's a bug to be made, we're going to figure it out and we'll make it also, of course, in the interest of the artists. I mean, we're going to make additions with some of the artists in the show and there's going to be uh, souvenirs, I guess. Manuel is working on a t-shirt, so yeah. The exhibition is great in a way. Can you? The exhibition is great in a way that we lose our habits, uh, how to deal with an artwork we play with it. It's not sacred yeah true i mean that's what different um with a digital exhibition i mean you suddenly can jump on an artwork you can touch it you can throw the throw the sculpture around or kick it around um so yeah there's new possibilities in the digital uh, platform name is instagram uh he For was what? a founder he was a founder of instagram i'm looking at these comments okay. but the platform name of yeah And oh no! I mentioned Mike. You know that I don't yeah. think everything is always money-driven. How And would you get... how would you evolve, Natalie? Nice to hear from you. How are you doing? What does it mean? How would you evolve? This is like so unprecise, Natalie. I'm so disappointed. This is like vague question. You should drink water now. <laughs> how how would you evolve? <laughs> you can't. No, I mean the idea is there's now a fourth like gallery location right in the digital digital and we're working on the second uh solo show already which is going to be launched you what did you do your question got off your, your question hasn't been uh oh sorry so we're going to open the next uh or launch the next solo show around may 10th pressure on the artist now we're not going to say what it is but it's going to be very different from what we just released Is designer's art any good in art? Yeah, that's what I think, even, uh, what I think is interesting. That's why I talk to, 
Sucuk and Bratwurst and uh, I, I, I do think you need to know about, I, I think it, it, art needs to relate to art. It needs to, it needs to, to happen within the context of art. Who, who six thirteen? Can, don't can you I know the, it's still happening, I, but these artists are like 13, 16 years old. Can the person please uh, send a second question to be more precise so we can answer yeah. it? Can Here I answer is. a question, Johan? One the second. project in this context, <laughs> what the iteration of the now? Is it a question? Or is sure. it a statement? Okay, May 10 is next iteration, what I was asking, bravo. I think she just wanted to understand what the next project is. Yeah, so the next exhibition is already being planned and I think we already started working on exhibition number three, right? Did we? Yes, I think so. Can, can I answer a question about someone mentioned something about um, drinking Coke uh, and that the person switched to Sprite? I can highly recommend drinking only one bottle of Coke each day. This one is too big. Try to get a smaller one and then it will make you happy and you won't drink too much. Just drink it once. It's very bad, Coca-Cola, no? It has a lot of sugar and so on. Yeah, true, but it makes me happy, you know? So if you love it, only drink one small Coke each day. Good. Okay, I think we, we, I think we arrived. Oh, yeah, actually, there's one comment with a view. We have one project where it's mixed reality and virtual reality, right? Uh, yeah, we have, we have, for the big group show, we have, like, mixed reality. We have AI. We have a hologram. Uh, we have we got it all. We have paintings with holograms. We have painting with AR filters, and people are going to learn about this, um, like end of next week when we speak to the artists. Question for next edition: You want us to know how project grows? Yeah, it does in real time. I mean, Johan and I speak about it like each day, and then we see what we're going to do. That's a good point. Are you planning a physical catalog of this digital exhibition? I would say maybe, no? I mean, we're going to have a piece on it in our upcoming König magazine you wrote. Yes. And I think eventually uh, it could be interesting to have, a, to have a magazine. But what I really like about this is that it's pretty in the open. We have a lot of, I mean, it was a lot of work. We, 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 we have a lot of... We have a lot of paintings also, which are stuck in, in, in all over the world, you know, from... I don't know, from US, uh, Great Britain, Asia. We have really stuff all over the place blocked. And we will have to find on the go now ways of, of, of sharing these works digitally and physically. Um, but I think it's good that it's like, a, 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 it's information now and might reside in a, in a catalog or magazine. Cool. Yeah, thanks so much for the attention. And um, I, when is the next date? For our talk series. Um, tomorrow at 10 p.m. again, from right? From tomorrow on, on 10 until next Monday, 10 each day. We're going to have a performance on Friday night. We're going to have a movie night on Sunday night. And But maybe we focus on tomorrow. Who's tomorrow? Uh, Wade Wallerstein, who curated... Um, the group show, the big group show, Well Now What The Fuck. You can type it in your, I don't know, Google search or whatever. Google Well Now What The Fuck. And then you can visit an online exhibition with 60 artists. And the interesting thing about Wade is that he just wrote a very interesting in-depth essay about digital art exhibitions and art and gamification. That's why I was thinking about him. And he's also going to tell us about how he curated this big group show for online and as I know from Wade, they are already working on the second edition, which is going to la launch early May. Tell me, uh, tell me the, uh, hell, what, the, what, what was the title again? Well, can now, you, what the fuck? Can, can you, you know, these what the fuck things, I don't know, they kind of turn me off. Also, this whole hashtag campaign, like stay the fuck home, I find that really inappropriate. I, I really, I find it authorian and... Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I find it disrespectful somehow. Yeah, but it's a very good show. It's a really, really good show. Wade is going to tell us more about it tomorrow. It's fully digital, but they reacted to the situation. It wasn't planned like a digital exhibition. No, no, it wasn't planned before. 
But since they are all well connected, they put this together very, very quickly. So it's, it's going to be interesting to hear more about this from Wade himself. And we're also, also going to link to his essay, um, which is really good. He spoke to many experts in the field, curators and so on, about how working in the digital changes um, the cu curatorial practice. Digital is terrible, no. I mean, if you, I mean, the thing is, I think the idea of the digital is not to replace like the real exhibition experience. So if you're not interested in the digital, that's totally fine. Um, but I think that's more like an issue of taste because some people are not interested in sculpture or so on. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I think the digital is then interesting when it's like conceived as digital, you know, all what I've been trying uh, with these 10 M series is to, to open up a dialogue and recreate, like, like simulate the experience with art, like as a place, like as a, as a, as a, because the physical explanation of art is difficult. I, I, there's this great, there's this, um, what's his name? Uh, Pofala, Boris Pofala, he wrote this article on, on uh, art in the public space, which I think also should uh, get some more emphasis because that's still possible to experience more than ever, maybe. Okay. Um, thank you so much and thank see you. you tomorrow at 10 p.m. But it's not connected. So it's just uh, the artist is online. And, and you are online all the time. I'm anyway all online. <laughs> um, and, and download König Gallery app because you're going to get more exhibitions. Like, um, this is the first one. And how open are we to um, people reaching out to us? Or you more, actually? I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, people can send in ideas for König Digital, I guess. And then we're going to look at it. So if someone is interested in doing something or contributing a piece of art, send us. How do you want them to send it to us instagram di direct message yeah send but it, sh it should be it should be a digital right yeah it should no it sh i think yeah it could be digital for the yeah it should be digital for the koenig digital exhibition series so i guess the easiest would be send it via dm to my instagram annika at annika at a n i k a and don't forget digital and telepathy me. art is the future i like this idea of telepathy also, I, I, I also read that, that, that Facebook is, is working on a mind reading. Uh, I mean, I need that urgently for my team <laughs> and for myself so I can read my own mind. Okay, salute, sleep well, everybody. Bye. Ciao.